Hey everybody, this is Constant from Revolution. Joining me will be Remy Hi. from uh, Christie's Head of Watches Europe. And of course, my colleague uh, David here. So uh, today in uh, the art house, to look at some of these uh, rare watches categories, right? Me and David, we had the honor to pick our favorites and we're gonna be sharing with you today. First of all, I wanted to thank both of you actually for, for having me uh, in Singapore. Uh, you know, and uh, it, it's an honor to be uh, sharing about these watches uh, with you guys. So, uh, David, honors? Sure, there's a, there's a theme here. So, Constant has picked two Rolexes. I have picked two QPs. I've picked this one because although AP is not the first to make a perpetual calendar wristwatch, they are known for their perpetual calendars. So, in um, Platinum, with a blue, bluish mother of pearl yeah. dial, it's, it's really, really quite something. And uh, I think this is the first series, if I'm not wrong. So, yeah, this is really beautiful, you yeah. know. Um, the, the QP is actually one of uh, the Content Perpetual, or we call it the QP. Mm -hmm. It's actually a, one of our staple complications uh, made by AP. And um, of course, we see in the Royal Oak cases, these are AP's highest, you know, highest level, I would say, the ceiling for Olimar Piguet, right? Mm -hmm. So, Remy, maybe you could tell us a little bit about this particular piece here? Sure. So, yeah. for, for this watch, um, actually, you know, it's, uh, as you mentioned, um, a, a reference that's pretty rare, you know, to be found in platinum with a mother of pearl dial. Mm -hmm. Actually, we think there's only 26 pieces that have ever been made. Wow. Um, and uh, it, it is with a Mark I dial. So, that's something, you know, that collectors actually really enjoy. Um, you know the simplicity of the of the dial, which on the mother of pearl dial takes even more of its meaning. You know it's really uh, astonishing, and the color combo as well really just uh, speak marvels. Uh, and yeah, uh, you know an additional great thing as well is that the watch comes from a private collector, and that um, you know it's offered in, in, in really great shape uh, and great condition. So it, it's a watch, and all the watches actually that you see here, they'll be offered in the. Geneva Rare Watches auction, which is on the 13th of yeah. May. Great provenance. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah, this is from original owner as well, right? Exactly. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Oh. So, David's first pick is this. How about we so take a look at Constance's uh, uh, <laughs> first <right>. pick? <laughs> so, uh, uh, when, when I first saw the uh, Geneva Rare Watch um, catalog, uh, of course, the one that uh, caught my eye is actually a day date, right? No, at, at a distance, this looks like a um, you know um, five digit white gold they did, you know, and, um, but, you know, when I bring it near to me, hold it, and I realized that, hey, this isn't a white gold they did. So, Remy, would like to tell me of more course. about this thing? Yeah, so again, um, you know, uh, a, a, a little rarity in the yep. Rolex market and, you know, Rolex collectors tend to really enjoy, you know, um, dials made out of coral. Yes. It's not something that you would see at all in modern production, yep. you know, so it's really uh, kind of something from the past. And uh, uh, again, something that's really well preserved. It comes with its box, with its with its uh, warranty, full you know, with full set, exactly Ooh, with wow. its uh, uh, even with its Rolex tag. Mm. Wow. So uh, it, it's part of really the watches that we look for and that we really want to offer at auction. Most definitely, uh, yes. Yeah. For collectors that are exigent, yeah. you know, you don't mm. want to settle for something that has. Uh, the, the slightest imperfection. So, mm. uh, so yeah. So this is it. And again, you know, as you mentioned before, it's uh, uh, just a, a wristwatch that's extremely rare. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, <laughs> the, is, the yeah. production numbers aren't documented yeah. necessarily at Rolex. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, ha having been at Christie's for a while, I, I, I can tell you, it's not a watch that you just have in oh. any auction catalog. Most definitely. Yeah, Remy. To be honest, right, I have never seen a platinum uh, um, five-digit day dates uh, with a coral down before. You know, for the collectors out there, you know, if you're a big vintage um, collector like me that loves uh, special dials, you know, you have a coral dial right here uh, and in exquisite um, condition, full set, you know, this is what we strive for as vintage collectors, right? But to find one that has all those nuances yet yeah. in platinum, for this sure. is like, uh, I would say, it's more like a unicorn, I would say. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy to hold For it, sure. right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, David, how do you think? What do you think about this? Still warming up to the day-date craze, but uh, it's really quite something. And when you hold it, it 
definitely is, feels yeah, very, heavier very, than white gold. So it's, some, it's some quite heavy to me, definitely. Yeah. Mm. So if you're a Rolex collector and you have this on your wrist, it's wow, <laughs> icing on the cake. Awesome. Mm. So I hope I didn't disappoint you guys. My first pick for Rolex is a. Uh, it's not your regular day date. So next, um, so David, your second pick. This has been my grail wow. for the longest time, and finally touching a piece is um, is quite something. So yeah. what David has here is a white gold to add a, another unicorn. This is actually a reference uh, Patek Philippe um, thirty nine seventy four, which is a perpetual calendar minute repeater. Okay, of um, so Remy, please exactly. take it away. So, um, you know, it's actually a very interesting pick and, uh, you know, it's definitely one of my favorites as well. The 3974, so we have to put things in perspective. When the watch was created, it was actually to celebrate the 150th anniversary of Patek Philippe. Yeah. At the time when Patek Philippe, you know, launched this wristwatch, it was um, not only Patek Philippe's most complicated wristwatch, but it was also the world's most complicated wristwatch. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's truly something special for, for, for collectors and for people who, you know, are uh, passionate about Patek Philippe's history and uh, who wants, you know, to see how Patek Philippe used to make wristwatches, you know, at, at, at the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's a, a beautiful minute repeater, which actually sounds extremely well due to the fact that the case was made uh, by the time case maker, uh, Hagman. Mr. Hagman. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you actually see his initials on the on, on the lug. Oh, I didn't notice that. Um, wow. So you know, it's again, I, I, you know, case makers today, you know, they, they wouldn't do that. So yep. uh, another little interesting aspect for the watch. Um, and then yeah, we, we we mentioned the rarity. It's a very rare watch. The reference is very rare, but mm -hmm. the, yeah. the the fact that it's in white, white gold, gold, it actually yeah. you know elevates the level of rarity mm -hmm, to definitely. something completely different. Yeah. Um, you know. I think there's around 12 pieces that are known, you know, or that have been made. 12 pieces, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, of the 12 pieces, you know, not all of them are in this condition, yeah. you know, with its box, with its additional case back, with its certificate of origin. Wow. Do we have the honors to actually listen to the minute repeater? Of course, of course. Please, <laughs> if, oh, if you want to... Please, yeah, David, yeah. do the honors. Uh, let's okay. hear the minute repeater. Uh, and here we go. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. need to wipe a tear. This is the sound <laughs> I remember. Uh, my, my friend used to own a, a black um, a black face, a yellow gold 2974, and I remember that many years uh, This is a throwback. My last pick will be this. Um, it is a, another unicorn. I mean, all of all of the pieces here are <laughs> unicorns, of course. Um, but it is a watch that uh, is, is one of my favorite watches of all time. And it's one that I probably will not be able to own in this lifetime, but maybe in the next. It's this piece. It is this uh, beautiful Rolex Daytona reference 6269 or we call it a Pave, Pave Diamond, you know, or Pave Dao or you can call it a princess card. I really like Pave Diamonds, you know, with, with the mix of the sapphires and with the Pave bezel, you know, it's, it's truly an amazing, amazing watch. And I heard there's 8 to 10 pieces known, but uh, Remy? The reference 6269 today, you know, it's widely recognized as one of the watches that really shows you know the what, what rolex was yeah. all about at the time you know when they created the daytona and you know other wristwatches as well yeah. they were always about experimenting designs you know and you it, it wasn't necessarily common at the time to see a sports watch you know yes. made of gold that was actually set with you know so, so many diamonds sapphires yeah. as well on the on the indexes you know blue sapphires so you know, it, it's something that was truly special and that was truly groundbreaking. So truly you know, hard to do as well yeah, back then. Yeah, it's probably crazy, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So you know, it, it, it's um, you know, as a result, you're, you're exactly right. You know, they did a, a, a very small series of the six two six nine. So it is really part of the watches that you know are not uh, easily found within the market. Uh, one of the things that is actually very interesting about this timepiece is its provenance. You know, it's a watch that. Um, you know, uh, has probably, you know, never been on the wrist before. Uh, when you see the quality of the case, it's, you know, just stunning. And on top of that, you know, it's a, it's a watch which is bestowed, you know, with the Ooh. crest of Oman on the case back. Yeah. So, 
you know, it brings you back to a, a to an era, you know, which is, uh, uh, which was absolutely incredible, where Sultan Caboose, you know, mm -hmm. was a, a mm -hmm. tremendous client for Rolex and other watch and other brands, yes. sorry. And therefore, you know, it, it led him to order watches which were kind of personalized, you know. Yeah. Um, not necessarily for him, but, you know, his orders were personalized. And uh, in terms of rarity, on top of its condition and, you know, its provenance, it's also an interesting fact to know that it's it's the first 6269 recorded. So if you wow. look at all the serial wow. numbers that were offered so far at auction, this is, this the, is the earliest one. piece. Wow. Exactly. And it has a Kanja behind. Amazing. And it has a Kanja behind. And the condition is absolutely stunning. So. Incredible. Um, you know, it, it, it's again a watch that we're extremely pr proud to, to be oh, able, yeah, able to offer for to, sure, for sure. to Rolex and, uh, collectors. I think uh, many of our, of our viewers might not be familiar with uh, the Sultan of uh, I mean, uh, Omani Kanja. Maybe Thank David you. would like to explain a little bit of what um, the Omani Kanja crest is, came from and what is it about? Well, it's his uh, symbol. So all of his, okay, not all, but most of his watches have this symbol either at the back or at the front. So in this case, of course, it's not at the front. But once you turn it behind, wow, bam. Another impressive fact about this wristwatch is that, um, you know, for, for, as you mentioned, you know, there are many uh, Rolexes with the Kanja, you know, on the dial or on the case, you know, and there are some, you know, little differences. And for example, you know, to have the crown at, on top of the con con Kanja, it's actually mm -hmm. nicknamed the, the Royal Kanja. Royal so Kanja, yes. a, a, an additional little detail for people who are really into uh, Mm -hmm. Collecting these these watches with this little uh, detail problem. is not really little. Yeah, <laughs> 6269 is huge. It's crazy. Six two six nine is already rare. On top of that, you yeah. have a kanja and then a the crown on that. top. So this is wow. unique. So absolutely yeah, unique. Yeah. Basically, we, we I mean, this is most probably a piece unique. Um, I definitely believe that this is a piece unique. I mean, these watches are so rare. You know, eight to ten pieces known. This might be a, this might be the newest one, but yet it is the oldest one. Yeah, and with such a rare reference in this condition, with the Kanja, when with the Royal Kanja, yeah. <laughs> with the Royal Kanja crescent. So you, you know, where I definitely join you is that you know to have a six two six nine in this condition mm. with you know the yeah. Royal Kanja on the back. Yeah. Although there is another piece you know that is known yes. in the market as having you know a Kanja and a six two six nine. You know, all these little details combined, condition, rarity, and provenance, oh. it definitely makes it something truly unique for people. I, I, I would bet, bet on my life that this would definitely be one of the hottest slots this, uh, this coming edition. You know? The condition yeah, I love is this incredible. Watch. Um, it's, thank, I mean, um, it, it truly is a pleasure Remy to be able to sit down here and uh, to, to talk watches with you and, 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 and what's better than talking one of the rarest, um, some of the rarest watches in the world, you know. And uh, it's been a pleasure. Yep. We really thank you. Um, appreciate it and uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you to both of you. Thank you Remy. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you for having us. Thank you.